Well, he, he was coming in too low, and he hit he hit my tree here, and that's where his wing fell off. The, the plane went to spinning, and that's where he wound up over there in my, in my neighbor's yard. Is this parachute open right here or not? Uh, I don't know about that, but I would think so. I think the plane got destroyed and knocked him around. I live on the back street over and I heard, I heard a loud crash and, and I hauled over here because you know I thought somebody got hurt and we see the plane down and me and my buddy jumped the fence and I don't know where he went. James Bachelor and I just jumped over there and kind of you know make sure he's still alive and you know, help him out. And he stumbled a few feet and he carried him and put him on the ground and that's when the cops took over. He was okay. Did he say anything to you? Yeah, he was talking. He told us her name. Um, you know, he said, you know, we asked him which day he was. Hey, give me, a, give me like your he back, okay. boy. His nose looked a little broke. His eye socket was a little, a little busted out. But I think he's going to be okay. All we heard was a loud boom. We thought the energy that someone, a uh, transformer head went out. And my son, Joseph Randstetter, came out here and tried to... He, I don't know you know more, Mr. Cook. He, when I was looking for a flashlight, calling 911, and when I came out, I saw this. But my son was trying to help the gentleman in the airplane. Well, we heard a big bang laying in bed, and we run outside. My neighbor said there's a plane wreck, and we didn't know where it was immediately. And when it was located, we ran over here, jumped the fence, and helped get the pilot the gentleman out of the plane. Me and Kathy's son and he's a real hero but he's in that fuel and everything it's just unbelievable something this close pardon quite a bit of fuel on the ground quite a bit you can smell it but we're gonna get them out regardless i mean how bad was he talking you know he was talking at first he wasn't real talking to it but then the more we was there when we got about scraps he's talking more Did he say anything we were just asking him his name and make sure reassuring him he's okay he's gonna be good be safe and tell us that we really didn't ask what happened, it wasn't our business what happened, just his life was what was important. All right. Have you ever seen anything like this before? I mean, this is kind of close no, to the airport. No, no. Not at all. I just, I was sleeping and I heard a lot of noise. I went outside and just went in the back. I had a flashlight and I saw a plane. And I just started yelling at my mom to call 911, call 911. I just started going, uh, uh, going up to there to see if anyone was inside. Uh, a couple other people were going to help me pull the guy out. Uh, I was just asking him his name, trying to keep him conscious, trying to keep him awake. Uh, I was just doing what I had to do and didn't think anything of it. Was he pretty talking part of it or not? Uh, not really. He was really bloody. I couldn't really tell that much. What about, what about fuel? Quite a bit of jet fuel on the ground? Aviation fuel? Uh, you can kind of smell when I first walked up to there. And uh, I was kind of a little worried, but not really too bad, though. How was he situated in the plane, I mean, as far as getting in there pretty tight or not? Uh, yeah, he was all upside down, and he kind of turned around backwards. It was really hard to tell. There was a lot of, like, leaves and debris in the way. Okay, what, he was what now? Uh, there was a lot of, like, debris in there, just uh, twisted up stuff. You couldn't really tell, but he was just all twisted around with, uh, like, his back towards me. Was it hard to get him uh, out of there? Uh, a little bit. Uh, cause the, the other two guys, they helped me out a lot. They did most of it. Thank you. 
It looks like part of the plane right there. Yeah, I think so, right there. Thank you. 